Hello friends and welcome back to the Mothership. I got a question for you. Do you like jerky and do you like coffee? If you answer yes to both of those questions, I have the perfect recipe for you. It's what I'm calling coffee jerky and we're gonna make it with some ground venison. Sound good? Let's get started. Now, first things first, when we are making ground jerky, we need to be careful about the amount of moisture we put in because any moisture we put in is gonna get stuck in the middle and take a long time to come out. When you're doing full steaks and then cutting them into strips, you can marinate it in as much moisture as you want and then just pat off the exterior. That gets all your flavor and it works just fine. But when we're doing ground, like I said, we gotta be careful about the amount of moisture. Now that we're doing coffee, we do wanna get some moisture in there, obviously. So the point here is to get the strongest coffee we can to get the most amount of coffee flavor into our jerky without using too much liquid. I'm using Death Wish, which they say is the strongest coffee. Who knows if it actually is? But I usually go with about three tablespoons per pound of meat. Since I'm doing about two pounds, I'm about six tablespoons. Um, I'll convert that to ounces, but that's what I wanna do for coffee. So get that brewed while we get together the rest of our dry ingredients. So I have a thousand grams of venison, which is about two and a quarter pounds. Um, first thing I wanna do is get my salt together. Since we're weighing everything out, you can use whatever salt you want. I'm just gonna use kosher because I have a lot of it. And I do about 1.75% of the weight of the meat in salt. So that comes out to about 17 grams or so. Some people like their jerky a little saltier. You can go up to 2% if you want, or you can come down to one and a half. I think 1.75 works out fine. Since it's jerky, I'm gonna use some pink salt, which is about half a teaspoon for this amount, which comes to about four grams. I'm also doing a tablespoon of garlic powder, which is about 10 grams. Two teaspoons of black pepper, which comes out to about six grams. Two teaspoons of brown sugar, or about 10 grams. One teaspoon of dark cocoa, which is about two and a half grams. And then two teaspoons of onion powder, which is about eight grams. And then once the coffee is done brewing, I'm going to pour it into our dry mixture, get into a nice liquid, because that'll help me evenly distribute it throughout the venison. Speaking of venison, let's see what we're working with. Here are two pounds, actually a little bit more, one of them is about 1.25, of ground venison. It's nice and lean. If you are going to use beef, you want to use the leanest stuff you can, something like 90% probably is about right but this was harvested by myself last fall. Now that my coffee's done, it's time to get it into my dry mix. So coffee amount that I'm going to do is about uh, six tablespoons, which is about three ounces, which is something like 90 milliliters. Uh, we don't have to be super precise, we just don't wanna go too much. So let's get about three tablespoons in here and just use that to kind of mix together. Now we just need to get all this into this, nice and mixed together. Okay, I'd say that's pretty well mixed together. What I'm going to do is just put it into the fridge and let it rest. So I'm gonna want it to start curing a bit, which will probably let me go you know, between four hours to overnight. Most likely I'll come back tomorrow and take care of this. So I'm just gonna put a cover on here, put it in the fridge and just leave it alone. 24 hours later, it's time to move forward with smoking down this jerky. This has had time to begin curing, if not fully curing, honestly, ground beef cures pretty quick. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna use my handy dandy jerky gun. I'm gonna use the tube attachment. I've grown to actually really like the tube versus just doing the flat strips. Don't know why, but somehow I like the texture better. I'm just gonna get this meat into the tube. Now another way you could do this, you could get a cutting board, put like a big sheet of your meat on there, put a uh, saran wrap over that, put another cutting board on top so it flattens out evenly, and then you could cut it into strips and use that. That's kind of the, the old school recipe, or old school method, I should say, for ground jerky, but the jerky gun does make everything a lot easier. It's basically just like a cocking gun. <laughs> That's about as much as I'm gonna fit in one go. So next what we wanna do is get the rack I'm gonna use. I'm running these on my pellet smoker with the rack attachment, so this should be perfect. I'm just gonna run them in strips. I try to do, these are about what, uh, three quarters of an inch apart each of these squares. I try to do one, then another, and have a space between them. That way you can get enough space for all that good smoke to get all around your food. So right now, just gonna run it and uh, put them in the strips. Got a whole bunch of jerky ready to go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my smoker up at about 180 degrees. That's honestly as low as mine's gonna go. 
And I'm gonna smoke these. I mean, you can look for an internal temperature of maybe 160, that would be fine. For me, I'm just looking for the right consistency. These are fully cured, so they're gonna be safe to eat. But I'm just looking for them to be nice and dried out and have that real good texture that I'm looking for. So 180 degrees for, I don't know, might take four hours, might take five hours. Um, and like I said, looking for a temperature of maybe about 160. Here's the setup that I'm running. Not super fancy, just have all my racks on there and everything laid out with enough spaces, or at least as much as I can. Um, as far as where we're looking to get to, like I said, I'm looking for more consistency, but you can also just kind of probe inside, you know, go a long way in. And I'm looking for about 160, like I said. This is showing 123, but it's gonna sit there for a very long time. I do expect maybe about four hours at least for these. Three to four hours is where I'll really start to check them. Um, it could go much longer, but we'll see. So you might have to rotate also, by the way. Um, this should be pretty even, but that is a consideration. So just monitor them, you know the drill. Four hours in, I think this batch of jerky is done. Everything is probing between 160, 175, and it's kind of the consistency I'm looking for. I think what I'm gonna do is take it inside, let it cool off to room temperature, and then we'll see actually how it tastes. Now our coffee jerky has had enough time to cool off down to room temperature, and it's time to give it a taste test, guys. This is what we're working with. It looks perfect. It looks exactly like you'd want jerky to look. You can definitely smell some coffee in there. I'm super excited to give these a chomp. Let's rip it in half. That's exactly what you want. You want it to break and not bend. That means it's got a nice amount of dehydration out of there. This looks perfect. Smells perfect. Time to give it the old chomp. Mm. You know, I love game meat jerky. Venison is fantastic, and when you put it into jerky, it's one of my favorite snacks. This coffee flavor, it's not overpoweringly coffee, but it is a really, really good back-end flavor. And then we got some other spices in there. It comes together, and it's really, really good. I make a lot of jerky throughout the year, and I definitely make a ton right before hunting season. I like to use what's left in my fridge and turn it into jerky so I have snacks out there in the woods and hunting camp. And these are definitely gonna be added onto my rotation. Guys, 100% give this one a try, especially if you're looking for a different flavor or you just really like coffee and you really like jerky. You 100% could make this with beef, just stick to the leaner stuff, 90 plus um, as far as your percentage of meat to fat and you'll come out on the other side perfect. Guys, let me know down below, do you make deer jerky? Do you make jerky at all? Do you have a recipe I'd like to try? I'd be love to hear what you guys are making out there. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz makes me feel super warm and fuzzy on the inside, but most importantly, Cook something fantastic, jerk up some of your meat, and I'll catch you on the next UFO barbecue. Bye-bye.